day has arrived and I've been given the chance to do a craft along with you all to do some colouring so I hope you've downloaded your pictures um, they're not Daisy May images I thought we'd do something uh, a little bit more generic uh, where there's nice large areas to get into to practice that colouring um, you may want to colour along with me now you may want to just watch and then colour at a later date so um, if you've not um, got the um, the code for the download Maria's going to put it up now okay and there's another little surprise over there for you uh, a secret code if you want to purchase any Daisy May products there's a 35% off at the mo uh, with the secret code that you just enter at the uh, checkout okay so we're going to be crafting and you can craft along as I said with me or you can just grab a brew and a biscuit uh, and join me while I uh, well not prattle on but uh, give you some hints and tips if you've got any questions send them in and I'll try and answer them and if I can't I can always get back to you at a later date with the correct answer okay so we've got there was two images to um, download there was the little girl in her bubble hat to start off with okay so she's got a nice big big face there to concentrate on colouring skin nice large bubble hat on with a, a large palm so we can colour that and then the second image was the little girl and the pussycat okay you don't have to use the colours I've used I've gone for bright colours today okay because I think we need cheering up because it's blooming cold out there and snowy okay so should we get started just pop those to one side okay so I've got my image here okay and I always start by colouring um, her face first all right so I work from my when I say lightest colours I don't mean I work from light to dark what I'm what I mean is I'm going to work her skin first okay and I work right through to the darkest color on the picture in this case which will be the pink of her bubble hat okay I know not all of you have got um, copic pens okay um, some of you prefer different alcohol markers, but they all work in the same way Okay, so as I said before any hints and tips that I can give you Please, you know send them in and I'll answer them just to make sure there's other people out there And I'm not waffling on to myself because I do waffle believe you me I can waffle Okay, so first of all I'm going to take uh, a warm grey, the palest warm grey I have and uh, the palest uh, blue green I have so it's if you're using Copics it's BG tri uh, quadruple zero and W double zero okay and what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to turn my image like that and I'm going to work out from the edge of the stamped area and I'm just going to feather my strokes lightly. Claire, mm? Jerry is asking what paper is the best to use? Okay, well there's lots of paper out there on the market and um, it, it is trial and error. I use a, a colour a copy paper and it's um, 300 GSM and it's really really smooth um, it isn't a named paper for using with Copics but through trial and error I found this the uh, best paper and it's uh, a Mondi it's M-O-N-D-I colour copy paper 
I use the 300 GSM, but it is available in other ways, like uh, 250, 125, and it's available on a well-known um, website, beginning with an A. Okay. So now, I feathered down one side with the warm grey, and I'm going to go over that, but not completely, with the B quadruple zero. Now, I know these are digital prints. I don't, as a person, use digital prints. I know a lot of people do, because you can create them at whatever size you like but this is a nice large image okay and of course it's printed out in black now if you were stamping the image okay and using alcohol markers you would use um, a memento ink pad okay and they come in an array of colors so whether it be black or you could use the uh, rich cocoa, which is a lot, it, it's soft, it's dark, but it's a soft colour and it's a little more forgiving than if you've got a, a black, black and white image on your paper. It's not as daunting. Or if you into no line colouring like I am, when you progress, because we're taking it right back to basics today. today. So when you progress, into being really confident with your colouring. Um, I either use a Memento Desert Sand or a No Line Stamp Pad, okay? It does give you a line when you stamp out. It's not completely invisible. You can see it, but your colouring will cover that line up. Okay, so let's get on with this. So I've gone over now with my BG quadruple zero and I'm just going to now pull the colour out once more by using this warm grey zero. I'll hold it up to the camera in a minute so you can see. I don't know how many of you are out there are actually colouring along or are you going to actually play it back and colour along? Will you let me know? Yes, we have over 100 people watching and Ooh. most of them have said that they have already the download and that they are enjoying this like with a cup of coffee or tea. Oh good, Oh, make me one then please, send it through. Okay, so if I just hold that up to the camera, sorry, Miriam. Yeah. Okay, you can just see, can you, can you just get the colour difference? When the whole image is completely coloured in, that line or that area around the edge of the character will make it pop, okay? So we've done that and now we're going to go into our skin colours. Please don't think I've got a lot of colours there, okay? I know not everybody will have these colours. There's lots of information out there on varying um, skin tones, of, you know, that you can use. Copic actually do do a skin tone set, but you can look up, you know, what people use to uh, colour skin. And I like, when, I, when I'm colouring skin, this is my preferred assortment of pens to use. So, we're going to go in first, and we're going to go in with an R, double zero, okay, and I'm just working in again from the edge in towards the centre of the stamp to image, and um, now I'm going to add some R20, and I'm just marking in her rosy cheeks, okay, now I put, do this first, so as I work into the image with my pens, I can, um, blend this heavy colour of pink out. Okay. Now it's up to you whether you colour from your lightest colour that you're going to use or your darkest colour. You can you can do it either way. 
okay. Um, I have a really bad habit of flitting from one to another. But today I'm going to work from my lightest because you can always add two but you can't necessarily take away. So I'm going to go in first of all, if you're using Coppets, with an E triple zero. Okay. What I will do after this, I will put the, the numbers of the pens that I've used up on, uh, I'll probably do a blog post actually, of what I've used. Now there is information out there um, on Instagram and things like that, Pinterest, and they will, what they do is, they will give you what colours to use, say if you were using, um, can't think of the name now, the ones with the little uh, pro markers, you know, and Spectrum Noir and pens like that, they will give you a breakdown of my colours and they will cross match them with say pro markers etc there 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 are tables on the web that will give you that information i'm sorry i can't give it you right now okay so first of all i'm going to go in uh, with my e triple zero and i'm going to again work from my edges and i'm going to work down into the center of my image not going to cover it completely i'm just working in work over the cheeks okay and then come in from the other side in towards the center okay now i'm going to go in with my double zero e double zero now the e stands for earth tone okay so we think of uh, browns and things like colours like that for our earth tone, tones, neutral colours, um, whether they be, you know, cool colours or warm colours, um, the E stands for earth tones. So I'm just going over the area I've previously coloured, okay, with my double zero. Now I'm going in with E02. Again, I'm colouring down. I'm not using a circular motion, okay? You don't need to with these pens. Um, just a gentle flick. Okay, and I'm just blending away or together the last colour that I Coloured. Okay. Just get another pen, which is my now my darkest that I'm going to use is an E11. And I'm just going to come in again. What size is the image printed today? This I've printed this. Um, I think it's on an A5 sheet of paper. But then I took the, uh, I reduced the PDF file when I downloaded it to 75%. Okay. I don't know how big everybody else has printed it out. You could go smaller than this. I chose to go a little bit larger so you can see what I'm actually doing. Can you see now how if I just hold this up, how there's not much distinction there between the cheek colour and the darkest colour I've just put on, okay? Um, but as I work into it, because it is, um, what's the word? It's a method of working in. It's not just a case of doing it once, okay? You've got to work into the image with your pens to get the um, depth and dimension to your colouring. Okay, so I'll carry on. And I'm going now back in with my lightest. Where can they find these free downloads? Um, now you need to go over to, um, it'll be on my blog over on Craft World. 
okay and I'll get Maria to put the um, what you need to click on okay the link thank you sorry I'm a bit of a technophobe okay so this time I've gone all around the image okay with the lightest color we've gone around the bottom back in with the E double O bringing that even further down okay under her mouth like so EO2 I'm not going to drag that well not drag it but go as far down as I did before so the shadow under where a hat is again colouring in but now at this stage I'm just going to add a little bit more cheek colour okay otherwise I'm going to lose it don't be worried that you think mm, she looks a bit you know orange tango as I call it because she will look like that until you start to add other colours to her clothes and her hat and that will tone down her skin tone completely okay so I'm working in and I'm layering the colour up and I'll probably work into this, you know, maybe five or six times before I get to a stage that I'm really, really happy with. And don't forget, with these pens, um, that once you put the colour down, the colour doesn't set, it's still movable. So I might get to a stage in a minute and think, right, I'll move on to another area even though it's dried to touch okay it hasn't dried properly and the, the tones will change as it dries properly I'll just show you can you see that on the back the bleed of the pens that is quite normal no paper will not do that when you're colouring with your Copics you will always get that okay people worry sometimes that they've got that mess on the back if you're going to make it into a card after you can always double mount it onto another you know a nice piece of crisp white card to cover up that mess if you're going to be able to see the workings of your card okay so I just wanted to mention that so this is coming together quite nicely what does everybody think? They are loving it and, and they are enjoying it a lot. Uh, the, we have few people that they are doing it, they are colouring with pencils. With pencils, okay. And Jude, she asked, do you find alcohol pens better with a brush end than, say, pro markers with solid uh, nibs? Okay. Now, when it comes down to um, alcohol pens, um, with a brush tip because there are other makes out there with a brush tip um, and the pro markers that was it Jude yes. that Jude mentioned uh, the bullet tip just let me I'll just detract from a minute just just to show you what I mean when you get a bullet tip on your pro marker you will tend to use a circular area to colour. Okay. With a Copic, you can flick. So you've got more control over the tip of your pen. Okay. But because that bullet tip is so tiny and so hard, you have to kind of scrub at the paper. Okay. 
Um, I prefer, that's why I prefer the brush tip. So if you're um, a watercolourist and you're used to watercolouring, you will be at an advantage to using a, a pro marker like, uh, not a pro marker, sorry, a Copic pen uh, because of that flexi tip. The other tip, the chisel end, okay, can you see that? Ooh. Yeah. Okay. Um, that's the same as the other end on a pro marker. It's this end, the brush end, or the nib end. I mean, there's ardent pro marker users out there that wouldn't use anything other than pro markers. I'm an ardent Copic marker user. I've always used them. Therefore, that's why I went with them. Plus, okay, the colours, we talk about colour hues. I don't want to get into the scientific side of it um, because I don't know that much about it and I'm not, a, you know, I'm not a chemist. Um, the colour hues are a lot closer together and a lot less forgiving when you're blending your colours together, okay? So there'll be, you'll, see, you'll get that seamless blend. The more you use them, the more you practice, the better your colouring will be, kind of things. And at that point, I'd just like to say, I don't work for Copic. I just like their pens. Okay, so we've finished the face for the time being. Okay. Sue said that hers, because she's painting alongside you, she said that hers looks like a sun tan clown so far. I'm sure it doesn't. And you might think it does, but I'm sure it doesn't. Okay, it's all about the more colour we add to this image now, it's going to add tone it right down. You're looking at a piece of stark white paper with a black image printed on it, okay? And then we've coloured this big area, the skin area, and there's nothing near it now to tone it down. So the next area I would colour in is her plaits. Okay, and we're going to use, um, I'm going to use, as I say, I'll put these numbers up after, if you're not actually colouring along with me. It's, uh, again, I've gone for earth tones, but I've also gone for a yellow tone to maybe give it that mousy look, if I just show you. Okay, just on her plaits there. Um, not a great lot of hair on this image. It's the next image. If we get time, I'll perhaps show you how to do a hair. But the plaits here, I'm going to go in with my yellow, which is a Y21. Okay. Again, just cover with the Y20. And I'm working from the edge into the middle, okay, and then down to the tip of a plant, okay. And then I'm going to go in with an E42, and I'm going to, again, work in from the outer edge in towards the centre. When you colour, you will find it easier if you colour in a large area, like when we come to the coat or the hat, to work in small sections. Otherwise, you will lose where you're up to. Okay, so coming in now with an E43. Again, just working over. areas that I've already pre-coloured but not completely over the whole image and now I'm going to add a touch of the 44 which is really rather dark I'm just going to add that around the edges has anybody noticed 
yet that I haven't said well the sun's coming in and the light's coming in from this direction and put X's all over. I personally think that makes you get your knickers more in a twist than um, when you have to worry about light direction. Okay, I am a trained, oh, trained's not the right word, but I went to art school, I learned to draw and paint the classic way, and yes, you had to paint, you know, with the light coming in from this direction, blah de blah But this is a craft, this is for enjoyment. What's the point of getting your knickers in a twist, as I say, worrying where the light is coming from? As, le as long as you can give depth and dimension to your projects, your colouring projects, and it's got light and dark on it, and you can achieve that quite comfortably, by thinking oh that should have been you know light instead of dark it doesn't matter okay as long as you've got that light and those dark areas you are going to get depth and dimension to your colouring okay I'm just adding a little bit more yellow I'm just gonna go in now a little bit more E42. Okay. Is anybody bored yet? I always ask that. Pe colouring fascinates people, doesn't it? They say that it hasn't been finished yet, but it's already amazing. Oh, thank you. That's nice to know. Okay, so we've give her hair some colour. Again, I'm going to work back into it. We've got on this side, okay, I've held it up to the camera. We've got a nice area of light and dark. On this side I've gone a bit heavy handed so maybe what I need to do is just make it slightly darker they don't have to be identical okay Sandra is asking are those pens light brushes are they light brushes yes well, they have a brush tip on them, like I was saying before, in a chisel tip. Um, when you um, actually use them, I use the tip to flick the colour, feather the colour, like so. Okay, they're not actually a brush brush. They don't. They're not as soft as a paintbrush would be, but they do have some flexibility to the nib. You know, you can press down on it, kind of thing. Um, as I say, these are my preferred pens. But at the end of the day, your purse dictates what you buy in the craft industry. You know, I like these. I pay money for them because I suppose they're the tool of what I actually do. Remember, you, you know, it's something you're doing for enjoyment, something that you will find very therapeutic and yes. calming. In fact, there are a lot of people saying, I'm not writing because I'm just loving watching you colouring. Oh, yes. But please do go on. If you're just watching me colouring, please do go and give it a try. And, and do, you know, message me on, on Craft World. I'll, I get back to everybody that mentions, you know, that sends me a comment on Craft World. I always reply, you know, if you are struggling, send me a message. I'm here to help, kind of thing. Just remember, colouring, it's not life or death. You're doing it for enjoyment. I just do it for a job. I do it for enjoyment as well. 
Okay, so we're going to move on to a pom-pom on top of a hat now. Okay, and I'm just going to use uh, some warm grey. So warm grey double zero, warm grey one, and uh, a warm grey three. Okay, and what I'm going to do all the time, I'm working in from the stamped edge. That's your, you know, your black edge black edge on your image okay all the time just going to turn it could you please repeat the paper card that you are using please yeah we'll get in trouble with that because it's <laughs> it's a 300 gsm mondi m o n d i color copy paper you can get it if you're going to cut your images out um, you can get it in a lighter weight than that, but I found it's by far the best paper. It is a personal preference, okay, at the end of the day, but it works for me, okay. And that's after, and I, I've used them all, the, ex, you know, the Copy Express and the Colour Copy paper. But I always go back to this one. It comes in packs in a ream of 125 sheets so you know if you have a a friend that you craft with well maybe not at the moment but hopefully in the future soon uh, i've had ladies that have split you know a ream of paper between them i mean i eat it for breakfast i go through that much of it um but i know you might not go through as much as I go through. So again, I'm just working light, medium, dark. If you're new to colouring with um, alcohol markers, whether it be the Copic or Pro markers, you, you do need at least two colours. So you can get some depth and shadowing in there. I'm just going over with the lightest colour which was the warm grey double zero and I'm just blending the shadowing out. The more areas you colour in you will you know bring your colour in together and onto that, I'm just going to make it look just a little bit more cream. Just going to add another earth tone, which is an E50. Okay, and I'm just going to bring, it's still from the same family, it's still, no, it's from a totally different family. I'm going to add in this E50 just over the, just makes it look just a, little creamier okay but that will stand out better when we get into colouring the uh, bubble hat okay so now when we move on to colouring the bubble hat oh excuse me I've got an itchy nose um, I've gone for a group of colours called RV they're in the RV group the R stands for red and the V stands for violet, okay? So they're made up of red and violet, hence the RV, okay? And the last letter, not the last letter, the last numeral, I don't know whether you can, can you see that last numeral? You get two letters and then you get two numerals. Well, the very last numeral on the uh, lid of the pen denotes the density the darkness of it so if it's a zero you know it's going to be lighter if it's a nine you know you know it's not going to go any darker than a nine okay so i'm going to be using rv52 rv55 rv63 and rv66 you don't have to add that many tones to your work. 
the more confident you come become the more tones you will add okay um so if you're just starting off two if you're quite proficient three and then i've just gone for that fourth to give it even more depth okay i'm going to start on her hat okay i'm going to start again because i'm doing this with you i'm going to start with my lightest which is my rv52 and again i'm just going to work in from the edges towards the center you must be getting used to this now me saying that okay and from this oops sorry everybody from the edge and I'm just gently flicking away like so and then when I come to this bit where the rib of the bubble hat is I'm going to again work from the center okay just gonna leave that centered uh, cable area for a minute then I'm going to go in with my R50 We've all gone very quiet on me, isn't it? We've got a question. Well, we have a few people that they are saying that they are loving it, but they cannot colour it now because they have to work or they have to do some things, but they say that they're definitely going to be colouring later. Good. So please do share and tag us with your makes. Oh yeah, I, I love to see what other people make. Okay, so I've just gone in with my second colour, which was my, oh no, yes, my RV63. Now I'm going to go in with my RV55. So we're getting deeper and darker, so I'm not going to go as um, far down. Oops, sorry. Go. Um, is asking if it helps to have the ink still wet. Um... On a Copic, uh, using Copics, no, because the um, you can still move the ink about, it isn't set, um, so it's not necessary. You could, you know, I, I, I could leave that as it is now, I'm not going to, but I could do and come back to it at a later date, okay? Um, I would say no it, it doesn't matter but it helps if you work on it um say you were going to you know leave it in a minute i'd try and get that area finished first not halfway through an area it would be you know harder but it isn't necessary right i'm going in now was that a bit of a feeble answer Anne? Was that okay? Yeah. Rosalie is saying that it's fascinating and hypnotic to watch. Oh, thank you. Okay, so I'm coming in now with my RV66, which is quite a lot deeper than the uh, colour we started with. Okay. Can you see, I'm, I've taken this hat into three sections. This is what I was saying before. I wouldn't work all the sections together. I like to work a section at a time so you don't lose where you're up to. And again, coming in with my RV55. I'm coming towards the centre. And I want the centre to be to be light as though that the light is hitting then I would probably move on to this area and what I'm going to do is I'm going to colour it all in 
Janet is asking if you could please have a watercolor tutorial as well. A watercolor <laughs> tutorial? I, I do do watercolor. I used to do watercolor long before, um, you know, I used to demonstrate with copies kind of things. I don't see why not. If it's helpful to you, you. Okay, so this time when I colour, I'm going to concentrate on these markings here. Okay, so I'm just following them round with my second darkest pen. Okay. I want to make this area, I guess, stand out. Do you mind if I just take a mouthful of water, everybody? I've gone a little bit dry. Won't be a minute. Now I'm going to follow that line with my deepest colour. Okay, so we've got, can you see where it's going? Dark, it just doesn't look anything at the moment. I'm just going to blend it out now with the uh, two lightest colours that I've got. So I'm going to come in with my RV52. I'll tell you the name. Oh, this is Cotton Candy, this one's called. They all have names. They are all concentrated, lo loving what in you. Oh. So that's why they're excusing themselves, saying, sorry if I'm not asking, but I'm just in love what in you. <laughs> oh. Okay, so. I'm just going to come in now down that side because we've got a kink in the hat there. I'm just going to go even darker and just under the palm and from the ribbed area. How are we doing for time, Maria? Are we okay? We're okay. We we are. Uh, we have done only 45 minutes. Oh, only. So, uh, <laughs> and I think everybody wouldn't mind to stay longer. So. Okay. <laughs> Just shout when you'll get bored, okay? <laughs> so we're going to move on now to the final section of our hat. Okay. And we're going to use the same principles of before. And we're going to use working from light to medium dark okay what you must remember to do is when you're coloring move your image don't just move your arm okay you want to move it so you can see it and color it properly I was um, at a shop once and I I was colouring and the lady said she was having great problems with the colouring and normally when I, I'm demonstrating and you've got people stood round you, <laughs> that's a laugh isn't it, when you could have people next to you standing, you know, close by watching you and she's I'm having awful trouble, she said, but I do notice you tend to colour upside down. I said, well yes I do, otherwise my hand would cover what I was colouring. And I was there again a short while after and uh, she said, I tried that colouring upside down and she said, it's, it's perfect. So, you know, maybe colouring upside down is a thing. Okay, so I'm going in with my darkest pen now. Just too bad. Oh. Shadow. 
was terribly worried this morning that I'd be sat here on my own and nobody would be out there. I guess I shouldn't have been as, as worried as I was. And I'm going to come in with my second lightest colour. Madison said that now she's colouring upside down. Who's who? Madison said that from now I'm going to be colouring upside down. <laughs> Remember though, ladies, I can give hints and tips, but it's the practice. And colouring isn't for everybody. Not everybody likes to take the time over a project. You know, some people like quick crafting, which is fine. Colouring isn't particularly quick, is it? But it's a lovely way to craft. It wouldn't do for us all to like the same thing, would it? So I'm just adding a touch more dark. And there we have the hat. I'm going to hold it to this camera now. Let's see if you can see it. So we've got, you know, a nice mix there of light and dark, and it's giving our hat texture, it's giving it depth, and it's giving it dimension. Do you mind to it around? <gasps> yeah. I agree. <laughs> Sorry. I always forget. I'm always getting told off for that. Okay. Looking fantastic. Okay, so now we're going to do the rim of a hat. And again, I'm going to go in now with, I'm going to start with my second lightest, which is the RV63. Okay, I'm going to bring it quite a way up towards the top of the rim. Okay, you can take your time at home, it's not a competition, you to see you can do it the fastest, but I am aware there's a time factor. And it just shows you really, doesn't it, how people do lose themselves in what they're doing. Okay, so I've added that. So now I'm going to go in with my mid toe. Okay, and I'm going to go over the areas I've just done. But can you see I'm not going right the way up and covering that lightest area straight away and all the time I'm just feathering the colour on. The f using a feathering technique does have an advantage. Some people are really heavy handed when putting their colour to paper, so they will find they get bleed, okay? And that's because they're pressing down far too heavily on the pen, and that's what gives you bleed, and that's what gives you uh, bleed over the edge onto the, an area you don't want bleed. You can remove that bleed with a, a colourless blender, Okay, just I have got one here. But the darker the colour, the harder it is to remove completely. What you want to do is use a chisel tip, okay, here, and you want to push once to or towards that stamped edge, okay? Don't pull it away, otherwise you will pull the colour out. You want to push it once towards the edge, 
your stamped edge and leave it to dry. Then you want to go and do it again once it's dry. Okay? And that way, you might have to do it three or four times. It should remove where you've got, you know, gone over the, the line. So, I'm going to go in now with my darkest colour, which is my 66. And this time I'm going to, again, just feather the colour on the bottom and then take it up the side. So, can you see what I'm doing? Madison is asking, would you advise the same method with colouring pencils, like to the light to dark and feathering? Yes, that's how I colour. Um, to, uh, and also your paper when you, you're colouring with pencils as well. I think sometimes it's nice to work on a, a textured paper and then you don't get that sheen unless you want that sheen there of course. There's no right way and wrong way. If you want the sheen, great, use a smooth paper. I like to use um, Tim Holtz's um, watercolour cardstock for that because it's smoother on one side than it is on the other side. So if you use a smooth side, you will get some texture there, but it's adding depth and dimension again to your, to your colouring. Okay, so in again. Around the bottom, and this time it's just the overlap of the uh, rib has changed sides, so you just go in. right on the edge of the hat. Okay, now we're going to go in with our mid deepest colour. Okay, I'm just going to brush it up. So basically all you're doing is, is you're layering your colour and it's a method of light, medium, dark, blend it back out with your lightest, light, medium, dark, blend back out. And you do have to do it, if you want that seamless finish, you will, as I said before, you, you, you will have to work in more than once okay that's why coloring isn't for everybody some people don't have the the patience to do it other people do okay so i'm going in with my second lightest color all the time bringing the color towards the top of this Rim. Reaches the top there. I don't start from the line where the last colour I put down. I blend it, okay, from the bottom and it's blending those colours together. See, I'm sure We've all worked out now that top of the hat is where it's going to be. The light. 
artist. I'm just going back over it again. I'll hold it to the camera in a minute just to show you. Okay. As I said, you can always go back into it at later. I might go back into that and just add a little bit more deeper pink going up. But well, that's how the hat's looking at the moment. It's gorgeous. Oh, thank you. Okay, so using the same colours again, okay, we're going to do the scarf. Okay, so we're going to aim to have that the light hitting in the middle, like it is in her face, like it is in the middle of her hat. Okay, so start with the RV52. In five minutes, we are going to be one hour. Okay. So do you want to start in five minutes with the second project? So we have a bit of everything, or how do you feel? Oh, well, how do the people out there feel? Do they want to see this? completed yes. yeah they decide <laughs> you decide out there whether you want to see this one completed or whether you want me to move on to the next one where we can concentrate on the hair more okay you've got a couple of minutes to decide Well, I'm just colouring this. darkest area okay and now I'm just laying some dark areas to act as shadow to where the scarf so it's easier if I explain on the hat because it's a bit bigger see how her hat sits there so we knew that it was going to be darker under the brim of a hat, okay? So that's what I'm doing with the folds of the scarf. It's telling me where to add the darker areas, okay? So I'm just blending it out now with my lightest. And I'm just going to Go a little bit darker here where her plaits sit over the edge of the scarf and follow that black line. If I hold that up, it's so beautiful. See, it's coming together now. Okay, and have, do you? Does everybody agree that her face has paled down? How Sue? Sue? Was it Sue who was having problems with her very suntanned face? Let us know, Sue, whether that face is beginning to look a little calmer. Okay, so we're going to change colours now and we're going to go for the coat. And this time I'm going to be using a group of colours called BV Blue Violets. Okay, and again I'm going to be using four colours uh, BV Triple Zero, BV Double Zero, BV Two. 
and a touch of BV04 for um, my darkest areas. Okay, so what I'm going to start with is I'm going to start by breaking it down into four areas, sleeve, body, one side, body, the other side, arm or sleeve as I've just called it. Okay, now I know it's going to be lighter on this edge, on the outer edge of her sleeve, this edge here, okay, because the shadow is going to fall where she's got her arm behind her back. even though it's not a large area to colour, I still like to add a variety of tones to give it some dimension. Make it darker just up there. And then I'm going to blend it out with my lightest pen. Okay, now I'm going to work from this edge here to where the button, uh, the button, the coat overlaps to button up, all right? Starting with my lightest again, because I'm going to have that light area in the middle. Okay, so I've gone over it a couple of times there. Zero. My BV02. I'm going to go under the scarf because obviously the scarf's sitting on top of the coat, so there'll be some shadow there. just sad. And then go in with our darkest one again under the collar to the edge of the coat. Sometimes the further apart the colour you use are, the harder you have to work at blending those tones together. So just take your time, give it time, and you'll get there eventually. buttons now I don't know whether you'll be 
able to pick it up. But just there, it's probably, you can't see it on the camera, but my um, pen has bled over. But I did have a, a clear pen. Because I've got that many pens out now, I can't find it. But again, I'm just going to lift that colour. I'm going to just push up along that line to lift that colour. Leave it to dry, just forget about it now. Okay, so we're going to come in from the other sleeve. I don't know why I was doing it on the heart. From the other sleeve. And we're going to do it as we did it before. we did before. Leave the pocket, we'll do that separately. Just down, I'm going to put a shadow line, okay, just where the coat overlaps. And then I'm just going to work out. Okay, so our darkest one dark under the pocket wouldn't it so like so BBO2 and if you're colouring along you should be start to see Just bringing those, the coat front together by, and just hold it up. Okay, I'll go for this little camera here. And if you can see, she's got this nice highlighted patch on the tummy, but the shadow where the coat overlaps and then I brought it in darker from the edges. Okay. Can everybody see that? Yeah? All right, so we'll just colour in her pocket. And I'm just going to add a bit of uh, BVO one there to it now. Because I want it to look different or slightly different not completely different so I'm just adding 
that's on BV01. in the cow because he's posh <laughs> and we'll just add a little bit of shadow under the buttons and there we have the buttons done well I've just got these colours out I'm just going to colour in the hair bubbles again you could just colour it flat if you wanted but um, I'm just going to highlight it in the middle. Okay. And we've just got a willy boots to do now on the heart. Okay. The soon I got back to us. In hand gestures. <laughs> Turn it around. Okay. It's so now, wellies. And I'm just going to be using some violet colours for these welly boots. Okay. Uh, v, what? That's what the V stands for, violet. Uh, V5, V6 and V9. Sorry, they've all got a zero in front of them. I'm getting a bit happy now. A bit slapdash, aren't I? Sorry. Okay. And first of all, I'm going to work a Wellington at a time. Okay, so we're going to start with this one. And it has the other Wellington sort of like sitting across it so we know that's going to be deeper in there okay now sometimes it's hard to colour in shoes I think to make them look realistic okay so we've put some shadow there some shadow on the inside of a heel and just round the platform. Oh, Claire, uh, Sue has answered uh, us back and she said that uh, it's looking better now, her face, the top Good, face. as long as she's not given up, Sue. Okay, that's really good. See, I was telling the truth. <laughs> Geraldine is asking, uh, will you say again the order please? So it's mid, dark, light tone, or is light? It is, how I always taught it is, your light colour, your medium colour, your darkest colour. So light, medium, dark. Back in with your light, medium, dark. When you go back in, when you do that process once, when you go back in with your lightest tone, what you're doing is you're blending those colours together, ready for you to start that process again. So you'd go back in with your lightest tone, then back in again. And you, you'll need to do that. Um, if you only do it once, that's fine. I'm not saying that's wrong. Um, but it's always good to do it three or four times just to get that depth, that dimension to your projects. Okay, 
what I, what I did forget to mention was when we've coloured each set each each section of the little girl when I'm colouring I've, I've followed the form of a body okay I've not coloured down I know I did there okay but it's still got form it's still got I coloured across there because it was a half I coloured around like that to give it dimension and form so you, you colour in the contours of a body okay so I did forget to mention that that's really glimmered otherwise it will look flat my darkest in my mid okay my darkest okay a little bit there where the boot crosses a little bit on the heel in with my mid will you use in. the same method the same flicking method when using watercolour pens? Uh, well, it depends whether you use a, a brush with them. Some people will wet their pencil or their pen. Oh, do you mean following the fork? Yes, the fork. Oh, yeah, or the, I would because it will give, it will work that way of giving that dimension and form to the body. Sorry, I've got a bit mixed up then. Now I'm going in with my very lightest, which is the V01. Okay, so now I'm going in with my mid-tone again. my lightest lightest I'm going to go in with that I'm just going to show colour the other wellington in and then I want to show you something okay can you see how we've got some dimension to that wellington okay so I'm going to work next one in the same way okay so we're going to put our very darkest there in here along this side under her coat and maybe a touch just there on the wellington where it's to work that out with my mid-tone and now I'm going to go in with my lightest So we've got our highlighted area here now. And then I want to make the light hit on the front of this. 
part of the Wellington. Okay, so I've gone in with my light, lightest, not my very light, because I've not introduced that till the end. So light again. my medium one and I'm just bring this in from my, that side again my lightest one and then I've got my very very light one and that's going to act as the Wellington boot highlight. Just rub that over both Wellingtons and if I hold it up like that, can you see? They've got form and definition. Okay, but what I did want to just mention to you is if you're having problems getting your highlighted areas, okay, your best friend when colouring with Copics is a white pencil. Ignore the pencil extender it's in okay and i use a, a posca white pen okay and these are great for adding those really highlightened areas so i would use this pen for just adding a touch of highlight to her eyes there Okay, turn it again and then I might just highlight that area on a welly boot and make this even more and just there. Okay, and that's, you know, if you're having, you've gone too dark and you can't really remove it kind of thing you can always use a white gel pen even or a white pencil or as i say i use one of these okay now the next area to color is the heart okay here how are we doing for time maria it's 24 past three so if we can finish in the next five ten minutes yep is that okay all right, so we're going to use ours again, and these are my pinks that I'm using now, my rose pinks, I think they are. So I'm just going in the heart, into the heart with my R81. Now I'm not going to go in next with my mid-tone, I'm going to go in this time with my darkest tone, which is the R83, only because the R83, for some reason, blends better after I've put the darkest colour in. Maybe it's just me losing the plot maybe they've been designed like that more like I've lost the plot actually but um, then in with the R83 like so in with my darkest Three. 
just blend it out. Now I've got some bleed on that. I've been a bit heavy handed. Never mind. Okay, so then we've got our heart. All right, last of all, but not least, because you've got that image and maybe you die cut that image out and put it on the front of a card or something, okay? If you were leaving it in a die cut shape, you'd want to ground your figure, okay? And when I say ground, I mean, so she's actually, looks like she stood on the ground. Okay, doesn't look like she's floating up in the middle of a shape. So to do that, I'm going to go in. Now this time I'm going to go in with my darkest colour. Okay, which is W3, which is a warm grey. And I'm just going to pull the shadow out from under her boots, okay, like so. Then I'm going to go in with my mid-tone, which will always be my mid-tone, which is a, a W1, and I'm going to pull the shadow even further out. Penny is totally with agree that. with the blending of the R883. Oh, do they? Yeah, she said that it blends, she blends the same way and it works really well. But, for the, oh, I thought I was going mad. I really did. And now I'm going to blend them together with my W0. Okay, and that will blend them together. If you're not happy with that, you can always go back in. Oh, that heart did bleed terribly. Okay, so um, like I was telling you before, just the R's are the hardest colours to remove. I'd let it dry and I'd go way back over that because can you see where it's bled completely round, okay. If you couldn't remove that completely and you thought, I've, I've done all that and it was for a card and I don't want to colour it again, you could always go in with your white pen, okay, like so. Or your white pencil, but you'd have to do it a couple of times. I think the white pen works better, and I did get a lot of bleed on that. Well, no one would know. Okay, so now just move all my more pen. And we've got our, that's the one we've coloured today. What does everybody think? And that's the one I coloured previously. It's gorgeous. Would you like that? Thank you. Okay, so I hope I've been able to answer some questions and you've all enjoyed it. I have to say thank you for actually sticking with me while I've coloured that. Um, and I hope it's been of some uh, use to your colouring questions when colouring in with alcohol markers. You never know, they might ask me back soon to do another one. See you all soon. Thanks a lot.